On Drop Rate is a series all about testing my luck. Each episode I will pick one or multiple activities to do and one specific unique to get from those activities. But there is a twist. I am only able to do this activity until I am exactly on Drop Rate. Kill 5000 Lizard Men Shamans to get a Dragon Warhammer. Defeat 512 Venonares to achieve a Treasonous Ring or loot 300 Rifts to obtain an Abyssal Needle are all ideas going by this rule. To spice it up even further, if I manage to get the item within the limited attempts, I get to keep everything I earned including the unique item. If I do not get it however, I have to forfeit half of all the money I earned during the grind to one of you guys, the viewers. But now, let's get into the video. Welcome to another on drop rate episode. In this one, I have invested 700 million GP for all this gear to efficiently kill the Fusani's Nightmare. We're going to be killing up to 100 Fusani's Nightmares in hopes of getting the Sleepy Tablet, which allows you to teleport right to sleep, which is a super good unlock on the Dragon's Medallion. We did have a 10 million giveaway to do for the last video, we had 309 entries, so let's roll that and see who is going to be the winner for 10 million GP. And Deformations Lamo, that was good, SC is the winner for the 10 million giveaway, congrats. And here we have the clip of me giving SC the 10 million GP, enjoy the money. So what really is my personal experience with a nightmare? Well, if we go down here on the collection log, I have 100 kills. And actually most of them is solo, but I've never seen a single drop. But as you can see, I have zero for Sunny's Nightmare kills. You can see that on the tablet right here as well. And that is going to be quite a learning curve. That's why I wanted to go in with the best possible gear invested in all these things. And at their all time low, I thought it would be a good point to have them for future content anyways. Just to stay it in the bank. But uh, hopefully we can get some good drops. Hopefully not die all too many times. Let's get into it. So let's quickly brief the mechanics of the fight. The first one is the prayer switches. If the Fosani's Nightmare does this animation, you have to pray magic. If it does this animation, it's ranged. And this one is melee. If you miss any of these prayers, you will get hit like a 70. To make it slightly more difficult, Fosani can do this animation right here, which flips all your prayers for around 5 attacks one step to the left, meaning melee becomes magic. Range becomes melee and magic becomes ranged. There are three main minions that also spawn during this fight. The first one being husks. For this you have to equip your melee gear, pray piety, equip your ham joint which is a fast attacking weapon. And you will one shot these every single time at least with max stats, 20 damage. And during these husks you cannot move and they also hit a fair amount of damage so killing them right away is a high priority. The second minion is a Parasite, the boss will actually impregnate you with this Parasite and you have to drink a Sandfew Serum dose to reduce the power of this Parasite. If you do not do that, you will take like a 70 and the Parasite will be way stronger when it spawns. But if you do drink it, you can then use your melee gear again, max gear, with an Elder Maul or a Saradom and Godsword or something very high hitting and you will one shot the Parasite. This Parasite heals the boss, heals the totems which we will talk about in just a bit. And lastly we have the sleepwalkers, these will spawn after each totem phase has been completed. There are a total of 4 totem phases and after the first one, one sleepwalker spawns, after the second one, two of them spawn and all the way up to 4. And you have to kill these with blowpipe, they spawn in each corner of the room and if you miss them you will take a massive amount of damage. At the absolute end phase you also have to burst down the boss of 150 HP. During this phase it will spam sleepwalkers that do 15 damage every single time they enter the boss. At this phase you just want to burst the boss and take as little damage from these as possible. Now the hardest mechanic during this fight that definitely killed me the most times is the dark circles on the ground. The Fosanis Nightmare will spawn a bunch of circles around you and you have to find the gap where you can actually stand. This will happen multiple times in a row sometimes or sometimes just one time. And if you do miss a circle and you stand in one, you can take up to 70 damage. To make this even worse, the Fosani's Nightmare also spawns these mushrooms around the area sometimes. And if you walk into them, you cannot use your run speed for a couple of seconds. And avoiding the circle sometimes without run is really difficult. 
Before we talk about the totem phase being the last major ability that this boss does, I do want to mention the flower phase as well. So in this phase, you can see right here, it splits the room in four different areas and there is only one specific area where it's both flowers covering in the area and in this zone you can actually stand and take no damage if you're in any other area you will take periodic 20 ticks every single tick so you will die very very quickly if you're not in this area and also every single time this mechanic happens it will start spamming the dark circles so you have a very small area to avoid them which makes it pretty difficult sometimes and lastly, let's talk about the totem phase. So when you get the Fosani's Nightmares shield HP to zero, you will then have to attack four totems around each corner of the room. If you use magic on this, you will deal double damage, so that is highly recommended. When you've completed that task of getting all the totems completely filled up, the phase has been completed, the sleepwalkers will spawn, and you will have to repeat the process. No! No, I was so close! Oh my god, are you kidding me? Ah, it's time to run back, I guess. All right, let's see what is the damage is going to be like. Hopefully it's not like 200k, something like that. Oh, it's 60k. That's literally nothing. I can die as much as I want. Oh my god, no. No, I was a tick off there. Oh my god, no, please. No, I actually died. I'm getting so close to getting the kill as well. I don't want to complain, but it's like I actually spent like nine minutes at this and then I just die like that in the end. But it's a dumb mistake. Oh, yes, actually first kill, prayer potions and we get Fusani's veteran 11 minute kill, that is really bad, I'm not going to lie, uh, I think I should be able to get this down with my gear to maybe like 9 minutes, something like that, maybe even better than that, because my mage gear is not the best, and that would speed up, if I had better gear for magic, it would speed up the totem phase by quite a lot, but yeah, first kill after, I think, five deaths. Like, seriously, this fight is so intense at the end of it, because I'm not experienced with it. But I can see at the end of it, it's probably not going to be that bad. But uh, I'm also considering maybe bringing Thralls. It could make the totem phase slightly faster. Bruh! No! Hey, I am not dying as much anymore. Definitely still dying, but uh, not as bad as before. And we are getting consistent kills now. We got a personal best of 10 and a half minutes, which is not great. But I do want to try to get that down to like 9 minutes or even less in this video. Oh, this is a good one. I think this is a personal best again. I will probably see a bunch of personal bests now that I've actually learned the boss more properly, you know. And that is Fosani's master for 5kc. And oh, look at that. 10 minutes. That was like 25 seconds better than the last one. <gasps> oh, no. Are you kidding? <laughs> Oi, I actually got so baited. I saw the big beam and I actually thought I got something. Ah, well, 350k. I'm not complaining. That's probably the best drop you can get from this boss, honestly. Except for the actual uniques. I actually think we might be getting a sub 10 minute kill here if I can get some hits in. I felt like this was pretty fast compared to my other attempts. So let's see what we're going to be ending at. Dropping some vials, mithril ore, and yes, we did get below 10 minutes. Very nice. I need to shave off another 47 seconds though for my goal. Okay, I do want to make a statement here. I was streaming some Fosani's Nightmare and someone told me... Why do you have the Ancestral Hat and not the Occult Necklace? Occult Necklace is 10% magic bonus and uh, the Ancestral Hat is 2%. Yeah, I completely forgot about that this item even existed. So we have that as an upgrade now for magic setup. What? What? What is this drop? Sh 20 sharks? For 10 minutes of work, I get 20 sharks. What? Okay, there's no words. So we just had another personal best, and I'm pretty sure that we are a bit above the actual KD of 1 now. So I actually have more kills than deaths now, which might sound not that impressive, but for me learning this boss, it was quite a struggle. Look at that, 19 kills and 13 deaths. For a while, I think I had 5 deaths and 1 kill, so we have definitely caught up and we're doing a lot better now. Actually, every single time I've been dying, I've teleported to Canafis and ran through the whole haunted woods because I do lose my Draken's medallion when I die because I do bring it to the boss. 
But you actually can pay this guy 1 million GP to have permanent access to this rowboat. And you can use the ectophile and then teleport right here. Use the boat and you will actually go right here. Which is actually slightly even closer than the Theater of Blood teleport. So if you're going to be doing the Nightmare Grind yourself or the Fosanis, this is a great unlock and 1 million GP is not too bad. We've been doing a lot of successful kills here and we are actually reaching a Grand Master task, Fosanis Grand Master. 10 minute kill for 25 KC, we're one fourth of the way there. We have not seen the Sleepy Tablet yet, and no uniques, but it is going a lot better, not really dying much. Oh, first Elite Clue Scroll. This is actually a 1 in 35, so not too rare. We should see three of them during this grind if I do all the way to 100 kills. But yeah, let's complete it, and I will stack the caskets in the bank. Yo, this was so fast. This has to be under 9 minutes. 8.36. Oh my god. Fosani Speed Chaser, Master Task. If I want to get the Grandmaster one, which is 7.30, I definitely need a lot better magic gear. There is no way. 1 HP and I die. 1. 1 HP. Oh, is that a thing, man? 1 higher hit and I... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I am back for revenge. Not dying this time. Running very safely. 4 HP left. And there we go. That is the kill. Let's zoom in and get my very nice draw. Oh my god. Dude, there's no way. Yo, I actually got an item. I even zoomed in. That's kind of a prediction. I have to say, it's not the best one. 55 million. There's definitely better drops. Whoa. Whoa. We actually got an item. That is so nice. I think we officially might profit from this, which is kind of crazy to say because the supplies for this is very expensive. 100 normal kills, 41 for Sani, and we finally have the first collection log item for the boss. That is really nice to see. Hopefully we can get even more in this video. And the question is, can we get a back-to-back -back Inquisitor or even Harmonized Orb Drop? Can we get it? No, we cannot. But Prey Pots is not that bad. Ooh, Parasitic Egg. Uh, that is another collection log item. Getting my wish, getting more collection log items. That is a 1 in 200 drop. I am very tired right now. I've been doing this for a long time. But that is very nice. It's a transformation for the pet, but I do not have the pet. After this kill right here, we are reaching the halfway point, And I have to say, this is a very draining boss to actually do. It just requires so much focus, one fuck up, and you're gone. Also, a bit of an update. The Inquisitor's items are actually going down by quite a bit. But I did actually finally sell the helmet for 48 million GP. So I'm probably going to be profiting regardless, which is nice. Oh my god, we actually got the Sleepy Tablet! Yes, I really wanted this item so badly, and that is the challenge one. It is such a good item to have for future for Sunny grinding, and that also is my overall 500 collection log item. Very nice. Let's actually try this out. By the way, if you missed it, that was on 57 kill counts, and before, I had to run all this way to get to Fosani. From Theater of Blood, all the way up here, down in this dungeon, and from this area right here, all the way down here, up to the Fosani's Nightmare at the top. Now, I can actually just inspect this, and let's apply it to my Draken's Medallion. I guess I have to use it on it. There we go. Very nice, small sound animation that you guys probably couldn't hear. And now let's see, where can I teleport to? Sleep and we land. Oh my god, that reduces the time getting here drastically. And after all of this, we of course had one elite casket to open. So let's see what we're going to be getting from this one. Hopefully a mimic, I would love to see one of those. So let's go ahead and open it. And it is no mimic and the reward is 167k. Yeah, Elise Clue Scrolls are pretty much always a disappointment. I definitely do realize I got extremely lucky during this video. The drop rate of getting any unique of these at all, the orbs and the Inquisitor gear and the Nightmare Staff, is 1 in 167. And I did get the helmet in 57 kill count, also got the 1 in 100 Sleepy Tablet in 57, and the Parasitic Egg, which is 1 in 200. So very lucky indeed.
Before we end the video, I just want to grab your attention and show you this statistic right here. 72.1% of you guys watching this series is not actually subscribed. So if you are enjoying the videos, make sure to subscribe, like the video and all that good stuff. But until next time, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one. Take care.